Hello, hello, Tyler Bryden here. I hope everything's going well. I apologize for a little bit of delay. I've been busy with work. Yeah, a couple of weeks and it feels like a lifetime. There's been a lot happening in AI since I've been gone. One of the biggest ones, Google I.O. If you didn't check it out, there's lots of little summaries. Everyone wants a summary now in 16 minutes and 10 minutes and 12 minutes. And there's also been some great memes about just the use of AI from soon during this. AI, put my AI in your AI. And if your AI isn't an AI, it becomes an AI. So the hype is here. Google, obviously a dominant player in this space. And, and from their stock performance, at least if I took the last look, stock performance, let's take a quick look here. Things were looking pretty positive. So if I go one month, there we go. This is since Google's IO. I did not buy before this, so I'm an idiot, like always. And quite an increase. So a great response to their work on AI and some of the releases. And one of the biggest things that came out of that was Bard. And I could talk about so many things in this IO release and all of this great AI stuff, but primarily what I'm focused on today is how do you get to use Bard if you're in Canada? Because right now, if you go and you want to play with Bard and you're a Canadian like me, You'll see, it's not supported in your country. Stay tuned. So I guess, uh, there's two things. One of them is how to do this. That's one of them. The first thing I'm going to address, I guess, is why. And there's a great article. I'll drop this in the description below. Uh, 180 countries and territories. Generally, when you see that big of a number, Canada's included, but there's something pretty fascinating about this. Available in 180 markets, but it's not available in Canada or Europe. And the hint is now, maybe not fully confirmed, is that it, you know, relatively related to regulatory issues. And Europe has already started a long run of these with GDPR and fines and sort of persecution against some of these big technology companies. And really GDPR are doing some amazing things for consumers in protecting privacy and data security, but in other ways causing maybe the impact of technology companies actually prioritizing the release of technology into these areas. And we've seen some Italy banning GPT and then it going back online and other countries questioning. And I think this is all positive things that there are concerns about how this technology is being created, adopted. I think those are important things, but then you can see then what the consequences are. So in this case, Canada and Europe missing from the list of supported markets and they're able to support the top languages. They haven't finalized expansion plans, but they're going to roll it out gradually and responsibly continue to be a helpful and engaged partners to regulators as we navigate these new technologies together. So helpful and engaged partner to regulators. Suggest the part skip them due to regulatory concerns. So I'm focusing specifically on Canada Day because I am Canadian. And one of the reasons here, there's been a couple things going on in Canada recently with uh, legislation around technology, AI, the content that is online for people who are in Canada and the content that they consume, which has always been a big drive of Canada. But we can see that there are generally pretty significant fines here. Ada, Ada, which Ada Lovelace, not spelled the same. It's an interesting name for this, I guess it makes sense. It would introduce penalties up to 3% of a company's global revenue or $10 million. $10 million, when we think about it in Google terms, maybe that's not everything, but it's still uh, maybe a, a troubled uh, possible scenario that they don't want to get into. So they're just avoiding. And that's why when we go to um, Bard right now, that it is not available. If you are interested on Ada, I don't have enough information on this. Maybe I'll look at this in another one, but this is typically I'm not a legalese expert. And if I was to be here and pretend I was, then there goes my credibility if I had any to begin with. A second part of this question, I think is probably the one that was more important is how do I get around this and actually start using Bard? Now, what was interesting, I just thought was fascinating when you do this search, you're going to see all the VPN players doing some advertising on it. Now, I'm not advertising VPN. I know lots of people on YouTube and stuff do. I don't have those kind of sponsorships or relationships. If you want to, send me a note. Send me a note. And, and so what I was looking at here, what's the quickest and easiest way if you don't want to go through a bunch of hotspots and analyzing all these different ones and figuring out which one's the best. For me, I have one that I've used and what I like is the Google Chrome extension version, hotspot, shield. I'm guessing I'm probably doing something wrong here. So if you are into this space and you have some recommendations for me, please let me know. I will listen. I'm not a person who doesn't like to listen. Then all you have to do, get hotspot shield, download. All you have to do is click and install this on your Google Chrome. And I now can see a little symbol here, hotspot shield. 
click to connect, it's auto server. What's important is it's not choosing Canada. And now if I go and refresh here, I can immediately access Bard. And then I can start to ask questions and I could maybe just ask a question, why has Google's stock exploded in the last week? Let's see what the answer is here. There's some amazing reasons why BARD is valuable right now, why people are starting to use this technology, do the comparisons between OpenAI's GPT and ChatGPT, which as many people know, one of the limitations being that it's not connected. It's got this cutoff point in 2021 and that the actual browse plugin that some people have access to in ChatGPT and that is more widely rolling out for release is not as sophisticated as what Google's doing with the connection to the web, search engines, all the information that they have. And overall, some nice pieces about there around drafts. What I like is that when you actually do bad response, good response, ask for some feedback. And there are some other pieces here. Now, a lot of other things I think are worthwhile discussing around Google, Bard, IO, all this stuff and the ramifications for you if you are a website person and you're doing SEO or paid ads. How does this work? I'm thinking through this in my own business and life as I've spent a lot of times as an SEO building traffic up or speakai.co websites, just over 50,000 people per month. How will this be impacted moving forward? All of these I think are important questions, but in this video, I just answered, how do you get access to Bard? And I've done so with a simple VPN, blah, 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 blah. And here we are asking questions. I hope that this was maybe a long-winded way of you finding this out, but I hope you enjoyed. You got some insight throughout and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.